In this video, we look at an all ceramic crown preparation on tooth number 19. So we always start off with the occlusal preparation. And as you can see, we're starting with creating depth orientation grooves. These depth orientation grooves are super important because it gives you an idea of how much you're reducing on the occlusal surface, especially when you're not using putty indices. A putty index I would highly recommend because that gives you an idea of how much you've reduced um, so that you're not under reduced which becomes a critical error. However, if you're not able to make a putty index then these depth orientation grooves will really help you stay aligned and gives you an idea of how much you're reducing. So there are several ways of creating these depth orientation grooves um, like we're showing you in this video, you can use a carbide burr. In this case, we're using a 330. Um, you can also use a diamond burr. Um, I personally like to use a mix of these. I use the carbide burrs and grooves and then the diamond burrs. In this particular uh, preparation, we're mostly using the carbide burrs um, to create the depth orientation groove. You can also use a diamond burr, like an 856016. It's a round-ended tapered fissure burr that also works pretty well for this. You can also try your hand on a 55 or a 57 carbide. That can also be used. So as you can see, after we created the depth orientation groove, we are now trying to remove those islands of tooth structure between the depth orientation grooves so that you can bring it down to the level that you want it to be. So for an all ceramic crown preparation, you want to have at least 1.5 to 2 millimeters of occlusal reduction. It's always better to err on excess rather than insufficient reduction. All ceramic crowns require a lot of body for the ceramic so that it doesn't fracture, which is why you need that much amount of tooth structure removed. On the lingual side, we're showing you a different technique of reducing the occlusal surface, which is the planar method. So the planar method of reducing tooth structure basically doesn't involve depth orientation grooves. You go to one plane. So right here, we're doing the mesiolingual cusp um, and we're doing it on the distal slope. So you're basically just reducing it as you go without depth orientation grooves. This one's a little bit of a risky business because it's hard to tell how much you've reduced. However, it helps you to kind of give a smooth preparation as opposed to a depth orientation groove where it's it's kind of difficult to get a smooth preparation, um, you know, without any sign of your depth grooves. I like using the planar method, but that needs a lot of practice and it's also something that's advised only if you have a putty index. And then you'll go ahead and smooth in everything else. Make sure that you have an even reduction on all of your cusps on the occlusal surface. So 
So as you can see, the occlusal reduction needs to follow the occlusal anatomy. With the rise and fall of the cusps, the central groove needs to be positioned so that it aligns with the rest of the teeth. Once you've ensured that all of this is in place, we can move on to the next step, which is the functional cusp bevel. Functional cusp bevel can also be done with the same burr that you've been using so far, 856016. Um, a good alignment method that you can use over here is keep your burr aligned with how aligned with the buccal incline of the lingual cusp and then transfer that over to your buccal cusp which is the functional cusp and the mandibular teeth so as you can see we are really ensuring that the functional cusp bevel is prominent and while you're doing that make sure that you're not nicking the adjacent tooth here again we have protected the adjacent teeth with matrix bands. You can also use a fender wedge to do that. Now we'll move on to axial reduction. You can use the same burr, once again, the 856016 round ended burr, and start with your depth orientation groove. So if we're, we're looking for a width of the finish line of about one millimeters, and an axial reduction of one to 1.5 millimeters. So once you've placed your depth orientation groove, you can go ahead and start removing the islands of tooth structure between your depth orientation groove. And in this, we're using a technique where we're preparing, we're preparing one half of the tooth surface and then moving to the next surface. So as you can see, we're staying quite a ways away from the gingival margin because we want to keep the finish line about 0.5 millimeters supra gingival which is ideal for tooth preparations such as these on a typodont so if you're somebody who struggles with that always give yourself some wiggle room so when you start the preparation keep it about a millimeter supra gingival and as you go on to finish the prep you can take the margin down so that its eventual position is about 0.5 millimeters and you don't have to tip the burr just keep it parallel to the tooth structure Now we'll move on to the buccal axial reduction. We're continuing to use the same burr, 856016 round-ended tapered fissure burr. So we'll start with the depth orientation grooves. As you can see, we're keeping the burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth structure. The burr itself has a taper to it, which will give you the ideal taper that's required. So don't tip the burr, and if you tip the burr, that's gonna lead to over tapering the tooth preparation which will reduce the retention of your preparation. Now you can remove the islands of tooth structure between your depth orientation grooves while you're also painting your finish line. When I say painting your finish line, you're making sure that you don't, you don't have any ditches or undercuts and it's just a smooth flowing finish line placed about 0.5 millimeters supra gingivally. So as you can see, when we move the burr towards the proximal surface, we're leaving a very small amount of tooth structure interproximally. So try as much as you can to go into the interproximal while you're preparing the buccal and the lingual axial surfaces so that when you go to break the contact, the step that most of us hate, you only have a little bit of tooth structure left and the process becomes a lot more easier. You continue to remove these islands of tooth structure and you go into the interproximal surface. Until you get an even reduction of all parts of this buccal axial surface. Now we're getting closer to completing our axial reduction. As you can see, the wedges that we have used all throughout the occlusal and the axial reduction is gonna help us when we do the proximal reduction because it's gonna give you some separation of the teeth. So now that you're happy with the axial reduction, we can go ahead and remove these matrix bands and the wedges and, and you can see how much space that's created there. So now we're starting with our interproximal reduction. You can use a very thin diamond like an 856012, the diamond that we're using 
in this video. And if you don't have access to these diamonds, you can also use a straight fissured burr like a 169L and that also helps to go through this area. So you're always keeping your burr parallel to the long axis of the tooth and then moving from one side to the other side, that is from the lingual to the buckle, seamlessly. And if you still feel a little bit underconfident in doing this, you can always use a fender wedge if that helps you and helps you be more confident in passing through this area. So once you're done with one side, you can move on to the distal side and break that island of tooth structure to achieve that proximal clearance. Now we've broken contact on both the mesial and the distal surfaces, so we can switch back to our 856-016 burr and start refining your margins. And now that you have that space you need, you can use this burr to go through the proximal surface and create that one millimeter of that beautiful margin that we are looking for. So you can start with a surface that you're confident with, for example, the buccal surface, and start refining your margin and start placing at about 0.5 millimeters from your gingival margin. As you can see, we had some wiggle room and now we are slowly taking that margin a little bit gingival so that we achieve that ideal 0.5 millimeter distance from the gingival margin. And once you're happy with the buccal surface, you can move on to your lingual surface and start refining the margin on the lingual surface as well. So as you're refining and as you're smoothing things out, you can slowly move into the proximal surface and bring your margin a little gingival so that it's about 0.5 to 1 millimeter from your gingival margin. Go ahead and smoothen all those lines out, the lines that you created when replace the depth orientation grooves and create that beautiful taper so that you don't have any undercuts from your preparation when you look at the preparation from the occlusal surface. Now we'll move to our interproximal surface and use this larger diameter burr, our 856-016, to slowly move into this space and create that a millimeter margin 
on our proximal surfaces as well. And once you've created that beautiful margin around the entire preparation, you can switch to a slow speed handpiece with a finishing burr, the same 856-016 but a red stripe so that you can remove the fine scratches on your tooth structure which are, which can easily be removed by using a finishing diamond in a slow speed burr. So you can move along each surface starting from the buckle and go to your proximals, your lingual and also we'll do it on our occlusal surface to remove any sharp edges. You'll see this fine tooth powder that comes out when you're using this burr which is, which is to say that this burr really doesn't remove a lot of tooth structure, it's only removing those scratches. After you have smoothened out all the axial surfaces and the occlusal surfaces, you can now go back and re-establish the functional cusp bevel that you placed when you started preparing your tooth structure. And you can now do this with this finishing burr. Another burr that's great is a carbide burr, a football burr, which you can also use. And also do the same thing on the lingual cusp, just to remove the sharp edges. You don't want any sharp edges in your tooth preparation. Um, it's not something that is clinically accepted, so it's not something that they would expect from you even in an exam. So make sure that there's nothing sharp, nothing pointy. All the point and line angles are completely round.
And here we have our finished product. It's beautiful. It follows the occlusal anatomy. It has a even one millimeter margin across all surfaces. It's got a beautiful taper. And there you have it.